I have a different question, another question. Um, Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a few books out um, recently that have discussed different perspectives of people that have had near-death experiences, two that have had near-death experiences and one that transitioned and then was communicating with a family member. And among those three books, it was interesting to hear, to read the different perspectives because each person's experience in the non-physical was different or seemingly different. There were some similar underlying things, all is well, you are loved, those kinds of things that we often talk about. But still... Did anybody say what you should be eating? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> but despite the commonality, their description of the differences were, were noticeable. So my question based on that preface is, we're, we're always creating our own reality. We're, 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 con we're creators of our own reality. Are we creating our reality in the non-physical thus making it appear differently, or is that just their description of it back through a physical filter when they aren't non-physical, or when they're more physical than non-physical? not any of that. There are so many things we want to say about this. Most important, when non-physical is being explained by someone who has been there and come back, the operative word is, they're back. And the next question is, what disc are they on now that they're back? And depending upon their vibrational frequency, that depends on what they get. So the non... So the do you get that? And do you understand that? Yeah. And doesn't it make perfect sense to you? In so other words, here's a really good uh, story, a perspective story. So some painters are painting a building in Texas and it's the original center building and Jerry Nestor had such fun selecting this very special stain for this building the building is made out of cedar and it has a lot of movement in the wood and they wanted that to show through and so they found a very special paint and they painted the building and now all of these years later it's needing it again so they were able to get exactly the same stain but the painters have never put this stain on the building and they're putting it on too thick the building looked sort of whitewashed so Esther is explaining to a man who, had, who works on the property who is not doing that kind of work now but could and wants to maybe you could go up and show him what to do explain to him that you can't just spray it on that you have to spray it on and rub it in spray it and rub it and spray it and rub it and not too much because we want the wood grain to show through so Esther explained quite a bit to her dear friend who then climbed up on the roof and is talking in Spanish to this other man and Esther is thinking oh good he'll let him know exactly what's going on and why I want it this way and how really easy it is and he comes down and Esther says did you tell him and he says yes and then days later, Esther finds out that the whole time he was up there, he was just saying to the man, don't be mad at me, don't be mad at me, don't be mad at me, don't be mad at me. She's making me come up here and show you how to do this, but don't be mad at me. And Esther realized that he hadn't conveyed any of the things that she wanted him to convey. She realized that there was a vibrational variance. She could have crawled up there herself and demonstrated it, but she could not have communicated it. So she chose someone who could use words to communicate something, but he was unable to communicate something because his perspective was so different. Are you sort of following this story? Mm -hmm. Isn't that an interesting story? It was so important to him not to be misunderstood, not to be bossing someone else around. And there's his boss on the ground telling him to go up there and boss someone around and he was incapable of doing the very thing that she was hiring him to do because his pipes were so clogged with what was there before that he couldn't possibly convey this very simple message and Esther said that was the most meaningful experience of my life to this date because I spent 99% of my life trying to control the perception that people have of me and I've never realized how futile it is never realized that all you can do is offer your vibration get on that disc and offer your vibration 
and translate from that place receive your inspiration from that place you see if we were standing in your physical shoes and we mean this completely we would not take anyone's word even Abraham's for anything that you're living get the basis of what we know about the laws of the universe and then practice them through your own exposure to life and come to your own resonances with what you want and take no one's word for anything because no one holds the identical perspective that you do you see but so the, so from these books there's no in so each of them despite explaining different physical non-physical experiences they're all accurate correct I mean none of them are having them in or, or is it an inaccurate well, see, reflection everything's accurate Luke had an accurate experience at the fair right and Kate had an accurate experience at the fair and anybody witnessing it would validate that that was the day they had right but the question is what was the vibrational basis for the reality that they were living and that's really what we want to apply to everything there are so many people that are tapping into non-physical Esther in the beginning was annoyed with us she said why can't you guys get your story straight so many people saying so many different things if you're teachers why don't you all teach the same thing and our explanation in those days to her was because students are in different place of understanding and so their perception even the vibration of their questions varies you see so if you knew that you only had a very short time and you do to ask a very specific question about this topic what would that question be what do you most want to ask about anyone translating non-physical back into the physical is is the entirety of the non-physical experience identical across the board in the non-physical realm of course not there are all kinds of different vibrational desires and intentions it's sort of like in your physical environment you all let us start again first of all it's pure positive energy right but pure positive energy attracts a variety of intentions this will answer your question Esther has been trying because we've been painting in Esther's mind this picture of these spinning discs and Esther knows that there's a disc around overwhelmment and a disc around despair and a disc around hope and a, a disc up there in that high-flying love and appreciation and joy place so her dominant intent these days is to pick a disc and somehow accomplish it and then see what happens in other words do her very best to get on that high-flying disc and if she finds herself on one of the others don't make too big of a deal over it hang on it'll be over in a little while but every chance she can to reach for that high-flying disc so in understanding that there are different discs that you could choose and that your point of attraction equals whichever one of those discs that you've chosen so Esther was trying to put words to it because she's writing this book we are writing it but Esther is the facilitator to get it onto paper and so she's trying to get the images that are in her mind onto paper so that others can benefit by what she's feeling and receiving so she's picturing these discs and she's trying to imagine what emotions because these are emotional discs they are emotional set points they are emotional vibrational points of attraction so she's thinking what is this high-flying disc what emotions are there well elation certainly is there she knows it she feels it often appreciation is certainly there and love contentment is certainly there and then she's thinking about it asking us about it in terms of momentum so here's this high-flying disc and this range of emotions within it so what's that feeling of utter love that feeling of well-being that feeling of contentment I know it's on that highest flying disc but how does that relate to off-the-wall enthusiasm to fun beyond any verbal description in other words she knows it's all on that high-flying disc and we're wanting you to understand that that's what that non-physical realm is like it contains all of that spectrum of momentum it's this high frequency vibration but the momentum equals so many glorious experiences but we want to say emphatically to you 
that so many books are not written from that vantage point because they're translated through someone on a disc not there and the message is only as clear as this receptacle through which it comes you see here's Luke and Kate and both of them pure positive energy beings sometimes and neither one of them pure positive energy beings all of the time and neither one of them blocking it off all of the time and neither one of them they sort of represent all of humanity and here is this stream of well-being this path of least resistance this path to take you to whatever it is that you want and the only question is what disc are you on what's your receptivity what are you able to receive what are you able to translate what are you able to perceive how clear of a conversation can you have with someone how much could Esther have conveyed to that man on the roof when she doesn't even know the language and even more interesting how much was she able to convey by sending someone who does know the language who didn't understand her heart who wasn't in vibrational sync with her intention in that moment you see what we're getting at mm -hmm. We wouldn't take anybody's translation. We wouldn't take anybody's word for anything. We'd get on that disc and we'd have our own experience. We'd translate our own experience, you say. Mm -hmm. One final question. Um... Before we move to another place, this non-physical energy sphere where everyone that you know who has ever been here who has re-emerged into non-physical, where all of your inner beings dwell, where all that we are is, we are steadily and continually pouring through you all day every day you don't have to have an excursion into non-physical to know who we are or how we feel you just have to move around your world and figure out if you're letting us in or if you're pinching us off because when you let us in you're having a clear moment when you let us in you're feeling pure positive energy when you let us in you're feeling clarity and love and appreciation you're feeling certainty you're feeling invincibility you're feeling on top of the world so we really want this discussion to be that energy that consciousness that is available to me you don't have to count on somebody who's made their excursion in the non-physical and come back and tell you what it's like it's all available to you here just get on that high flying disc and feel it but the reason humans don't know it is because they don't consistently get there they stay here in worry and despair they stay here in overwhelmment or in anger and as they hold themselves in those vibrational frequencies they can't receive with any sort of clarity because they can't find the resonance so they can't translate the words so they don't know the knowing so they say oh you've been there what did you learn while you were there and we say that tells you nothing have your own experience words don't teach it's only life experience that teaches you say final question um, obviously this body of work and lots of <clears throat> other bodies of work have all been founded and based on the whole notion of the law of attraction however I'm hearing that that phrase if you will being used less and hearing things like vibration and frequency being used more have we sort of moved beyond the notion of the law of attraction is there a better way to describe it well we've mentioned it several times here today but we're out on the leading edge of the discussion and so we're just refining and redefining what law of attraction is okay it is all law of attraction there is nothing more significant than law of attraction that there are people misunderstanding it completely and writing entire books about it right yeah very good yeah. always a pleasure thank yeah. you yeah.